CAD announced six categories based on which they would be conducting the category based draws going forward. Many of you were happy and of course a lot of you started to panic about it. Whether you're happy or sad about it, this is the reality and of course it's best for you if you use this new reality for your advantage. We'll be talking about three different ways in which you can use the information about this big change for your own advantage and ultimately immigrate to Canada. So don't go anywhere, this video might be very important for you. First things first, what is this big change we are talking about? What are category based draws? How this will impact the current express entry system? Will Canada only conduct the category based draws or will they keep conducting the all program draws as well? And how this would impact the cutoff scores? I've already answered all of these questions and a bunch of other questions as well in my last video. So I'm not going to repeat the answers again. I'll provide a link to that video in the description box below and you can check it out. So if you're still watching this video, I believe that you would have answers to all those questions that I just asked a minute ago. Okay, so if you know about this, if you understand this concept, then let's try to understand how are you going to use this big change for your own advantage. Now, you have the certain information. From the last one year, we have been talking about Bill C-19 and the categories that it would introduce. At least for this year, we know the categories. So that's a good piece of information that we can use for our advantage. Number one, all those people who actually belong to these categories. So maybe you belong to the healthcare industry, maybe you belong to the STEM um, occupations that are listed in that uh, list of occupations. First of all, you must be very happy that your occupation has been listed in uh, one of those categories. But your happiness might be limited if you realize that your score is too low, even if that category has been selected. So what do you have to do? Let's say that you're a software engineer and your job occupation code is that has been highlighted in the six categories. So in that case, first of all, you should realize what is your score in the express entry uh, CRS system. Let's say your score currently is 430. That might be good enough, but there is a chance that score might be a little bit on the lower side. Earlier, maybe you were thinking that 430 is of course, not a very good score, considering that the cutoff score has revolved around 470, 480 and 490s in the last couple of years. You thought that your score is 430, even if you improve your IELTS score that would only reach 450, which still might not be good enough. But now, this might be good enough. You never know. I'm talking about 20 points here, but you never know. Even one or two points might make a huge difference. Eventually, for someone, it would always be the case that they missed the cutoff score by just one point or two points and you don't want to be that one. So even if your job occupation is one of the chosen ones, you should not sit idle. Just sitting happy about it might not be good enough. Instead, you should use the situation to your advantage, put some more efforts to it and try to understand if there's any chance of you improving your score because that might increase your chances of getting the ITA so in the same example, let's say that your CRS score is 430 and you can improve your CRS score by improving your IELTS score, maybe by 15, 20 points. If that's possible, just go for it. Earlier, there might not be any use of it because the cutoff score was above 480, but now in the new world, it might be of so much use for you. And those few extra points might actually get you the advantage that you were looking for. IELTS code was just an example here. It's time that you analyze your profile again and try to realize that which is that one factor that can improve your CRS score. Even if it is improving by three or four points, I would say that the efforts would definitely be worth it because you never know that when you might get lucky and the cutoff scores might actually go low for that particular category and your profile may be selected. Express entry category based draws might be starting sometime in the next one or two months and hopefully if that's the case then we would see the cutoff scores pretty lower for each category than what it is right now. It's actually around 480 at the moment right but going further you can see for any particular category it may be 450, 440 we don't know about it. So try and take your chances and improve your score that will only increase your chances 
of getting the invitation. Okay, now let's talk about all those people whose job occupation haven't been listed in the categories that have been defined for 2023. How can you use this information for your advantage? Okay, number one. First of all, you should see that if there is any chance for you to switch to any of those job occupations, I'm not asking you to actually switch your industry. So if you belong to a totally different industry, if you belong to sales and marketing, I'm not asking you to switch to STEM. But instead, if you are already working in the STEM and then uh, you're working in one of those occupations which is not listed there but then if you can make a switch to that job occupation which is listed there it is only a matter of few months that you become eligible for that uh, category so the job experience required is only six months in the past three years which means that if you make that switch from one job occupation to another job occupation within your category then of course you're still eligible for the express entry but at the same time maybe by the end of this year, become eligible for one of these categories. Okay, so of course, that was quite an obvious way of doing it. Uh, but all of those people who just can't actually uh, make a switch of their job occupations either, what should you do? Of course, it is not easy. The option I'm going to suggest would be very difficult. I would be suggesting you to learn French. I've been talking about it in the past as well, but you know, now there's a separate category for French speaking people. If you're proficient in French and get the required score, then your chances of getting the ITA would increase multiple folds because trust me, there won't be many people who know English and then French. Now you'd be considered in an elite class of people. I know I'm suggesting this. You might say saying is easy, but doing is very difficult. I totally agree with you. I hear you but then it is for your own benefit, right? See, if it is something that is easy to do, then everybody and anybody would actually do it. But because not many people can do it, that's why if you do it, your chances of getting the invitation would be very, very high. Okay, now talking about the third category, the international students. Maybe your international student is already studying in Canada. Maybe you're passing out in the next few months as a class of 2023. You have a great chance because now you know that if you actually get one of those jobs, if you can get just six months of work experience, you become eligible for a very elite category. And even if your score is not in the 480s or 490s, you stand a great chance. So all those people who might be graduating soon, look for a job occupation that has been listed out in one of those categories that would make a world of difference for you that is the information that you can use for your advantage now all those international students again who are just thinking of actually uh, moving to canada for the international studies they want to actually pursue their higher education and then eventually settle in canada so what should you do how can you actually read out some information from this and use it for your advantage now, I would say the same thing again here that, that the categories for the next year might change, but more or less, you would see similar categories. If you're in the STEM category, maybe your job knock code might differ, but then STEM is going to be in demand in Canada. I really hope so that in the next few years for sure. Similar to healthcare. If you're in the healthcare industry, there's no chance that healthcare is going away for the next couple of years. I am, you know, 100% certain about it in my mind at least. So that's an advice that you can actually use this information for advantage and actually enroll yourself to a course that is closely related to this so that you can actually get a job for any of these uh, knock codes and eventually you can uh, use these categories to get the ITA for yourself. Please note that I am not an immigration lawyer or a registered immigration consultant. So all the advices in any of the videos that I share with you should be used at your own risk and at the same time and the same time should not be considered as a legal advice. I hope you guys are smart enough to understand that. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. If you have any comments, any feedback or any questions, please put them down in the comment section below and also don't forget to click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.